Hello? Hi guys. I'm early for once. I think I'm like five minutes early. Hi everyone. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks for that. Hi guys. We'll get some people in and then we'll get right get right into the reading. Um, so it's going to be a mandala reading actually. So let me get the mandala book out. How's everyone's Saturday going? I hope it's going well. Hello. Okay. Hi guys. Another live. I missed you guys. How's your week? Are you guys enjoying the weekend? Hi, Eve. We have beautiful weather here. It is in the high 20s degrees Celsius. Finally getting some sun, some vitamin D, getting outside, trying to ground. Not just grounding in the earth, but I find myself grounding in myself more if that makes sense reconnecting with my inner child has been extremely healing for me as of late since we did last week's reading um about the inner child and that dream that i had i've been doing a lot of a lot of reconnecting to the inner child um and then i started to get these interesting messages about ancestral bloodlines and blueprints. Um, the word blueprint yesterday came to me while I was driving um, and I was also talking to Patrick and he used um, the word blueprint as well which was confirmation for, for me that I was on the right track with where I'm going with this message which we're going to do a mandala reading on to get a little bit more insight because I don't know exactly where we're going to go with this. But um, it's interesting because I was driving and I had my GPS on and the picture of this reading kind of looked like I chose very particular um lines that kind of looked like veins but I didn't want to show veins I wanted to kind of mimic veins and pathways um and then I was looking on my GPS and it had all these roads and on the road that I'm on was blue and I thought of oh I'm on a blueprint like I matched to a specific blueprint of mine and so it just kind of clicked that these are the ancestral bloodlines and blueprints that we are all that are awakening that we're awakening to that are awakening activating upgrading updating within us i don't know what the correct terminology is but um we're going to talk about that and i feel like this is really big in the collective energy right now where a lot of us are awakening to our ancestral bloodlines and blueprints meaning that i feel like i feel like because we've been healing our generational wounds, generational curses for some of us, um, and healing that lineage, there's something that has awakened in the spiritual world with our ancestors. Like I feel like my ancestors are more free to um, to live and to experience their life in the spirit world. So you may also be feeling more freedom in a sense. It's also because your ancestors are experiencing more freedom in the spiritual world. Some of them are even evolving their magic or their, um, their spiritual gifts, their intuition. Okay. It does not stop while we are living on earth. It continues into the spirit world. So I definitely feel like my ancestors, from my experience, they are practicing more of their magic, more of their skills, more of their, um, heightened abilities and psychic abilities in the spiritual world and really doing the work that they need to be doing there. Um, and I can feel the effect of it here in the physical world. So there's, there's a connection of this thread that I feel like a lot of us are awakening to and recognizing because of the healing work that we have done. So we're going to specifically be tackling what 
what ancestral bloodlines are awakening or what message does spirit want to relay as it pertains to that and and the blueprints so a lot of us are matching ancestral blueprints right now and that's an interesting thing our energies are matching these blueprints that have been outlined as frameworks as particular like templates from our ancestors um, and as we kind of mirror and match up to that, they get activated within us, but then they'll also take form and shift to meet our energies and our needs more so. And then we will set up those blueprints for the next generations to come. So that's kind of the way that I've been seeing it. And, and, um, that's the way I've been getting it channeled to me. So that's all that I have right now <laughs> that I can talk about right off the bat. But what we're, what we're going to do is pull a page from the Mandala Source book. You can get this on Amazon. This is where I, I always get asked, hey, Patrick, I always get asked where I get this, where I got this Mandala Source book. It's right on Amazon. You can just search Mandala Source book and you'll get taken directly to where the book is. I can also link it. Okay, so let's see. What messages do we need to know? What messages do we need to know? Ancestors, known and unknown. Great Grandmother Nyla, Spirit of the Most High. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your collective message. Okay. Let's see. Okay, we got one. So one popped out. I feel like I folded this one. Oh, 267. Why do I feel like we've gotten this one before? Because it's folded so many times. <gasps> Dragon power. <laughs> we definitely have had this one before. But you know what? I'm not going to put it back. I'm going to take it. I'm going to read it. So um, you can gaze at this mandala. I'm going to leave it up here for a few seconds. What do you see? What do you feel? I know we've had this mandala before, but there's a particular reason why it's coming out again. So I definitely feel like energy has shifted. Perhaps the egg has cracked. The egg is born. There's something born from the egg, rather. Even take notice, what I instantly noticed was the shells on each of the corners and the pearls within them. There's something about that that in, immediately brought my attention to it. All right, let's see. It's interesting as well. The uh, the egg does stand out, yeah. What I've noticed for the very first time, actually, it looks like the, you see these green, what they look like leaves. It almost looks like this egg is um like a flower. Something has flowered. It's opened, right? All right, let's see. So this is in the category, the self in times of challenge, dragon power. A dragon represents the passionate energy within you, offering protection from danger and standing guard over your inner nature. Okay, so now I'm just getting this vision of my ancestors um, offering their protection and watching over me as I'm reading this, standing guard. <laughs> When you feel threatened, use this mandala to call upon your inner guardian to give you courage and to keep you safe. Now I'm just, I just got the word um, guardrails. Meditate on the spiral at the center of the mandala symbolizing your life energy. Notice that it lies within the protective shell of an egg. Feel this shell nurturing and cradling your bottomless reserves of energy. Now I just heard the word reservoir. So the two words that are standing out are guardrails and reservoir. 
Now tap into the power of the dragon which makes you strong and protects you. This is a strength that you summon from your energy reserves when you are under pressure. The dragon is in a ring with its tail to its mouth. Okay, so now we have the Ouroboros, emblem of the indivisible spirit. This provides all the energy you need to be yourself and protect yourself. If you have enough energy, these are the same thing. Beyond the diamond of protective flames, gaze at the open clamshells with pearls on them. Dragon power makes you feel safe enough to open up to others. That's why I was so keen on these shells in the corners. Beyond the diamond of protective flames, the clamshells represent the feeling of safety, feeling safe enough to open, to, open up to others. And I feel like that's interesting because um, personally, that's an experience that I've been going through, opening up more to others, opening up more to myself, opening up more to our ancestors, our ancestors opening up more to us. There is this, this again, remember what we talked about in the middle, the, the egg, how we said that these greenery look like leaves as if something has opened up, as if something has flowered. So, I mean, the title of this is Awakening, right? Perhaps we should change the title to Opening of Awakening Bloodlines and, and what's the other term? Uh, blueprints. Opening. For an impenetrable shield, stand inside of yourself. Okay, and then it talks about the Ouroboros. Okay, the circle of renewal. The Ouroboros, and we talked about the Ouroboros. Do you remember that? Oh my god. There's a lot of things coming full circle, and I've been saying this for about a month to myself that a lot of people are going to come full circle. A lot of things for me are coming full circle. I'm coming full circle to this. And this is the point in which is renewal. The point in which we circle back. That's the point of renewal. The point in which the Ouroboros bites its tail, eats its own tail, is the point of renewal. So a lot of you are coming full circle. So pay attention to the things that are coming around full, full, cir full circle excuse me, in your life. So the creature is integral to many creation myths where it is described as encircling the world. Holding our globe in a protective embrace It symbolizes primordial unity, self-sufficiency, and the cycles of nature. So self-sufficiency is standing out a lot. Okay, that word... Most obviously, the regenerating force of creation that emerges out of destruction. Someone also had a reading about destruction. I don't know if it was Shana or Eve. The Ouroboros represents an unfolding process of renewal, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. All that is known and unknown is contained within its ambit, and in some images, the egg that it holds between its claws symbolizes the Philosopher's Stone. <laughs> The fount of all knowledge. I kid you not. I honestly, I'm going to take a screenshot of what I've been watching. Please tell me why. Yesterday, I watched um, I watched Harry Potter and I felt the need to watch it from the very beginning. I finished The Philosopher's Stone yesterday uh, and then I started this morning The Chamber of Secrets and then I'm going to play The Prisoner of Azkaban next. I just finished The Philosopher's Stone. <laughs> the Fount of All Knowledge. And in Harry Potter, The Philosopher's Stone represented... It wasn't knowledge. It was the, the essence of life. Of eternal life. Um, which is this regenerating energy. So, I'm getting a lot of... Um, I'm getting a lot of different things. I'm kind of feeling a little overwhelmed in where do I need to go. I'm going to actually put this away. 
and um, let me just sit in this energy for a little bit while we shuffle. There's a lot going on with these ancestral bloodlines and and blueprints. I'm getting images of keys. You just watch them for the first time. They're so good. I love the movies. I haven't read the books. Um, so time, time has been really interesting. And time is coming into, into play here in the energy. I can feel it. So in Leo's reading, there was um, there was an energy of time as it pertained to your soul transcending into the future to heal, to deal with something in the future so that your present self would not experience it. Um, but your your present self is feeling all of the physical effects of the healing of the events that will never happen, but it happened in the future. Um, I don't know why I'm, that is coming into play here. A lot of us are experiencing time for what it really is, which is fluid and non-existent. Um, a lot of us are no longer experiencing time linearly, okay? Um, that's actually what's happening in the collective. And I don't know why this message is coming into the bloodlines and blueprints. Okay, so that's an interesting linkage. There's something about, again, and I use that word past time in Virgo's reading. Okay, someone has, I have to say this, someone in the chat, like you're watching now, um, or it could be when you're watching later, I don't know, but I feel it's someone like actually here. You've been praying about an illness, or you've been praying about... Um, you, but either you're praying about an illness as a, for you or you've been praying about an illness to a family member, like something is hereditary, you don't want your son to have it or your daughter to have it or you're getting tested to see if you don't have something and you're praying that you don't have it. Um, I'm, I'm giving you confirmation that whatever it is that you're worried about that's hereditary, um, you don't have it. Okay, um, your children won't have it either. It's, it's going to skip. Okay, it's going to skip you um, and it's going to skip your children. Like they're not going to be affected by it. Someone is very concerned um, about that. So I just wanted to, oh my God, look at this, the seed. Oh, oh, now I have to get the, now I have to get this out again. <laughs> the seed. I just heard the seed of time. You really can't make any of this up. I missed, um, I missed doing these mandalas. So you have here the seed. And even this is a, a kind of like a spiral right there. You see that? So we're definitely on the right path with this message. Okay, we're definitely on the right path on the message. <laughs> Let's get one more because I definitely felt, um, that definitely felt confirmatory, but I'm also seeing like something, um, yeah, that's right. Seed is the pearl. Oh, thanks Eve. I didn't even notice that. Wow, Eve, thank you. I didn't even notice that. Look at that. Wow. 
that's crazy um this also gives me the imagery that something is bottomless like at the bottom um i don't know if a lot of people are feeling like they're hitting rock bottom or they're at rock bottom or they feel rock bottom um, but something feels like at the bottom. It's reminding me of that Pisces reading, the cup under the sea. Like the, the cup was at the bottom of the ocean floor, like sitting on the ocean floor. This reminds me of this that bottomless energy, which the mandala talked about the reservoir being at the bottom. You have to dig deep into the reserves. So there's I also want to say there's a reserved seed, something that has been reserved, like put aside. Okay, now we're kind of getting a different message unfold. A reserved seed, something put to the side, it's reserved. So this is the reserved seed. Reserved for what? Reserved for what though? Okay. Well, actually it's a pearl. <laughs> the reserved pearl. Oh, look at this. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting an ancestor story. Someone was an orphan. Oh my God, look at this. See the fault line? Looks like veins, right? Blood, bloodlines, blueprints. Look at the mirror. Remember how in the beginning, how it was explaining your energy, your energy has... Because you've been healing the ancestral bloodlines, you've been healing, okay? You are a mirror. You are a mirror. You're mirroring the bloodlines. You're mirroring the blueprints that your ancestors have reserved for you. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. I was like, where are we going with this? As always, I'm like, where are we going to go? Okay. So this is a reserved blueprint. Okay. For you. For you. But I'm getting a specific story. And I don't know why they're telling me a very, very, very specific ancestral story. I don't know if this is going to be symbolic or... If it's going to hit right on the nail with someone, but someone was an orphan or their ancestor was an orphan or their ancestors, I don't know, one ancestor, two ancestors, because I'm getting like more than one ancestor was in an orphanage. You have here the orphan. Someone, I'm also getting a lot of um, like children being adopted. I feel this energy of like someone feeling um, left out. You're not. Fe um, okay, I'm getting a message that if you have been if you have been adopted or if you if you are an orphan or were an orphan, there is an energy of feeling separated or left out from from family. My left ear now is ringing. See, there's something from the past. A lot of stories from the past, from the past, are going to be coming in for you. So if you don't know your ancestor stories or your family history, that is either going to be channeled to you or you're going to see something like this, an or like an orphan card, or you're going to see something um, that's going to hit something inside of your soul where you're going to understand your history or you're going to understand a little piece of your family story or of your story because it affects you, right? The self, the story of self. But yeah, I'm getting, um, I'm getting, I'm getting adoption. My husband has been like with being adopted lately. Wow. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting adoption. I'm getting orphans. Um, cause there's this energy of like feeling separated, feeling separated because you can't see the immediate family, but you're not separated. Okay. There's, there's a connection. There's a connection with the bloodlines and the blueprints. Okay. So 
that that's coming through okay for those of you and for those of you that are dealing with that it's to ensure that you are safe okay coming back to safety because this is all about coming back to safety okay and that's the message of the ancestors in general no matter how you're resonating with this so far okay they always want to come back to safety okay you are safe and you are protected okay let's get into um let's get into the shamanic okay so the message here okay You're mirroring, okay? You're mirroring the ancestral bloodlines. You're mirroring the ancestral blueprints. Okay? That your ancestors have reserved for you. Okay? I was at a chiropractor today and they had um they had an image of the perfect storm look at where i so many synchronicities the perfect storm card okay let's see The reserved seed, the reserved seed. It's interesting. It's almost like reserved power. Um, reserved seed. Keeping it for a rainy day, I just heard. Keeping it for a rainy day. Keeping it when you really need it, when you really need something. It's like it's like when you when you save money right in the bank, right and you don't touch it, right? Why don't you touch it? Why don't you touch that money? Saving it for a rainy day. That's what this is. That this is what it feels like. All right. Thank you to my ancestors, known and unknown. Great grandmother Nyla, spirit of the most high. What else do you want to say? What do you want to say about this? Wow. Look at the cosmic womb. It's number six. You can see a little fetus in here. This is a divine feminine. You're getting all of this energy. The seed. The cosmic womb holy this is also very much rebirth energy renewal regeneration something is coming out of the reserved seed something's coming out of this reserved seed what is coming out of that reserved seed why do i feel like we've channeled this before <laughs> why do i feel like we channeled this before A lot of people that I've been talking to as well have said that um, they're in the process of this rebirth. And rebirth, the feeling of rebirth is so physically painful. Like physically it's painful. A lot of people don't realize that when you heal energetically, when you do shadow work, it's felt physically even more so than it is energetically. So this rebirth, okay, the cosmic womb, the seed that's reserved inside of you right now is being birthed and you're going to feel it physically. It's going to manifest um, very differently for all of you, but I'm also seeing a cosmic balance here with this number six. Okay. Limitless possibility at the bottom. This is stars in the sky, number 51. 
<laughs> you have joyful news, inspiration number 33. 45, repairing the veil. 45, that's a nine, that's a cosmic nine. And then you have here one, a tidy house. Clarity and organization. So it's interesting because the way I laid out the cards, you have here repairing the veil and the fault line. Okay. I almost want to say there was some kind of fault in the blueprint or fault in the bloodline. Okay. How did this get repaired? Obviously through your healing. Okay. Through the shadow work that you have been doing. Through all the work and the spiritual energies that you have been putting in throughout this whole entire journey, throughout this whole entire process. You have repaired this, this line, okay? You have repaired the blueprints. You have repaired, okay, the bloodlines, okay? That is so evident here, all right? That's so evident. And spirit here is just confirming that the work you have been doing is not just it's not going to waste. It's not going to nothing. Because I feel like a lot of people need the confirmation because the work that you are doing, you don't see it, right? I mean, we do. We do see progress physically um, and materially in our material world. But a lot of it is done energetic and spiritually that you don't see. You do, you do not see it. So this is spirit confirming for those of you who need that a little bit more of that validation Okay, that's validated for you here. So don't doubt the work that you're doing, okay? And also your ancestors don't want you to hold this doubt either, okay? And as that's repaired, you have here clarity and organization. This is my Virgo card. <laughs> clarity and organization, a tidy house. So I'm getting like, um, I'm getting this energy of like a, a new womb, um, like a new home. Um, like there's some kind of, there's some kind of home energy here that I'm getting like a, like, um, I want to say the home is very much symbolic of the self. Okay. Cleansing of the self, cleansing of the home and that's where this reserved seed is going to be birthed into. The seed is going to be birthed into this now clean house. Clean house. The seed couldn't be birthed before in an unclean house, in a disorganized house. Okay? So now it's you're completely mirrored and matching this repaired blueprint. Okay, cleaned up the house, and this is where this new seed is going to be birthed. Okay? I feel like this is so clear. I'm almost like, why does, is it me? Or like, is this all, why is this so clear? Usually the messages are so vague, kind of cryptic. But spirit is just kind of like, this energy is this, this energy is that. <gasps> Look at that, the sun. Does it also kind of feel quiet to you? I'm also getting, um... I'm also getting this message of don't stop where you are, okay? I don't know if someone is, is feeling kind of stuck. Um, don't stop where you are. I almost feel like someone is stopping themselves. Someone is getting in their own way, okay? Limitless possibility. You can go, you can go for more or you can reach for higher, okay? There's more inside of you. Again, that dragon power. There's more inside of you. There's a reservoir. There's a reserved seed inside of you. There's more inside of you. Okay? There's more inside. You have here the rabbit. Fertility. 
okay, I'm getting a quickened pace, um, a quickening of energy here with the rabbit. This is also um, good luck and fortune. Now I'm seeing the fortune's wheel. It's almost like the rabbit is super like hypersensitive, hyper aware. A hyper awakening right now is also taking place. Also like hyper clarity, like a lot of things are, like I want to use the word hyper in front of it, not to say that this is a hyper rabbit and like moving all over the place really chaotically. It's almost like, it's like hyper organization. It's so meticulous. It's moving quickly because it knows it can, but it's moving quickly in a very meticulous, organized and in a clear way. And it's so crazy. Like, I feel like I've been doing that too. And I even told a friend of mine, I, and I wrote this, I wrote it so clearly. And I said, I feel like I'm hurtling through life. I feel like I'm hurtling through life. The rabbit It's this quickening of energy, but it's quick and meticulous and organized, not a, in a quick chaotic sense. Okay. And that energy, okay, the way, the way that you are clear and organized, okay, it is exactly mirrored in the spiritual world. Remember, you have here the veil here, okay, and the mirror. Your ancestors are also moving in that particular fashion in the spirit world. Do you see what I'm saying here? All the work that you have been doing, Everything that you have been doing is helping your ancestors thrive in the spiritual world. They're performing magic. They're doing their work. They're doing their healing. They're doing all of their spiritual work that they need to be doing at a higher, at a higher frequency, okay? Because of what you have been doing. That blueprint, that bloodline is repaired and it is strengthening. Okay, when something is repaired, it is what? It is regenerated. What was that mandala saying with the dragon power? Renewal and regeneration. And it is strengthened. There's a strengthened bond here. Okay, Re remember, you're not alone. Okay, now that you're moving... Now that you're moving through life, rabbit, okay, you're hurtling through life, you're clear, you're organized, that energy is also mirrored in the spiritual world. Let me also tell you something. There's an aspect of yourself over there as well. I'm getting like, I'm getting this interesting energy of time. I'm getting a very, 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 very interesting energy of time. What you are doing today in the present moment is, is exactly what's happening in the past with your ancestors. I really hope that makes sense because time is so clear right now to me and I'm trying my best to explain it. So imagine like this veil doesn't exist just for, just for a moment. Okay. What you are doing, what you are doing right now in this present moment exists in the past. The mirror. Okay. And that is why your ancestors are healing the way that they are are thriving the way that they are. 
You thrive, they thrive. You heal, they heal. You work in this, in this manner, as do they. Everything that you're doing here is there. And now there's a reserve seed here. I'm so curious about this reserve seed. I really want to channel it, like, clearly. Look at this. Look at this interconnections. That's the strength of bond. It's as strong as a mountain. It is as tall as a mountain. That's just, that's just spirit and the ancestors confirming the bond. Three of pentacles. The workmanship. The bond. The relationship. The connection. It's so strong. It's unbreakable. It's unbreakable now. Where something was broken is repaired and it's, it's, it cannot be broken again. Okay? Where something was faulty, where the blueprint was faulty, was finicky, the bloodline was, was clogged. Listen, it's not, it's not anymore. Okay? So, for those of you that are having doubt, release it here right now. Okay? There's no doubt. Look at you, nine of swords. Why are you worried? What are you worried about? Why are you worried? It's interesting because this, I'm getting the image of the veil, kind of like that horn, kind of reminds me of that, that veil right there. And instead of nice little ribbons or swords and eyeballs and worms all over it, this may have been what it looked like previously, but this is not your present moment. This is your present moment. Some of you still perceive that this is your present moment when it's really not. So be careful of your perception, okay? Be careful of your perception. All right? Be careful of where, where you're looking. I just heard, where are you looking? What are you focusing on? Yeah, the red balloon. Thanks. I remember that reading. Let go of the red balloon. You have here the hyena. The mother of cups. Tell me about the seed. I want to know about the seed. The reserve seed. Tell me about the reserve seed. The bee. Tell me about the reserve seed. The bat. Tell me about the reserve seed. The octopus. One more. Temperance and the mother of wands and the spider at the bottom of the deck. Okay, I'm getting this, I'm getting a lot of, um, I'm getting like some kind of bullying. Like I'm getting someone laughing at someone else. Because um, I'm getting a nurturing energy. Like there's a lot of uh, cosmic, cosmic feminine energy here coming through with the cosmic womb and the mother of cups. But I'm getting this energy of like someone was laughed at or someone was made fun of like indirectly or someone like poking fun at someone indirectly. But they're just saying, oh, it's just a joke. I swear to like I just talked to Patrick about this too. It's coming out here with the hyena and the nine of swords. Um, this has this is like this has happened even like in in the ancestors with, with your. Um. um with your ancestors. 
a lot of a lot of this energy is within these kinds of families especially with magical families with families that have dabbled in, in witchcraft um and like the occult where a lot of people did not take them very seriously and that's an energy that i'm getting here of someone was not taken very seriously and this is something that you could be seeing in your own life where people have not taken you seriously or um people have laughed at you for things that you have said or um so that's something that i'm seeing here okay and in releasing that like letting go of the red balloon letting it go um actually repairs the veil actually repairs that bloodline and that blueprint because like who the bleep cares about what other people think right um but that is actually a wound okay that's a wound here that i am seeing is being repaired and it's specifically around being laughed at and not being taken seriously in life okay so that could be something that some of you yeah, look at this, the joyful news, like, see here how this is, um, this is, this card is more inspiring, it's more joyful, but I'm seeing, like, someone laughing at someone else, um, instead of uplifting them or taking inspiration from them, they're laughing at them, so that could be a wound here for, for some of the collective is something that I'm getting here. I'm picking up on very specific like storylines. So if it doesn't resonate with you, just remove it. Um, but that's a that's a deep wound. Okay, that's gonna assist you in repairing the veil. Um, okay, back to this back to the seed. Okay, that is purely alchemizing inside of the self. Okay, the reserve seed is alchemizing right now, and. This alchemy is where you're going to feel, you're going to feel something here. Um, and this is where I feel like a lot of you are going to be feeling pain. You're going to be feeling pain. It's like giving birth. Um, I've never given birth yet. Um, so I don't know the, the scale, how severe that pain is. But from what I've heard, it is pretty painful. But I'm not, I'm not saying that you're going to feel it like in that region, but it's going, it's because this reserve seed is being utilized. A lot of you are utilizing this reserve seed and this is where the, the dragon power resides in yourself. Okay, so there's some kind of um, challenge here that you may or may not be going through or... Um, because I'm seeing challenges, I'm seeing things that worry you, I'm seeing things that stress you out, I'm seeing you in times of challenge. And so I see that in order to persevere, dig deep into this reserve of, to this seed, okay? This reserved seed, it's power, all right? That's going to assist you in releasing your challenges, okay? So you can meditate with a pearl if you have a pearl meditate on the pearl meditate hold an egg okay we can get eggs at the grocery store you don't if you don't want to eat it don't eat it just like meditate with it um you can even draw a shape of an egg meditate and imagine that there's fire in that egg okay there's life inside of that egg okay there's that's your reservoir okay so that's another message here about this reserve seed is that you can pull from that reserve seed and get through any challenge okay so if you're going through challenges right now in your life that's really going to assist you okay um another message that i'm getting of this reserve seed is that whatever is going to be birthed from this seed because it's going to be very different for all of you it's very painful okay so a lot of you may be feeling physical symptoms from energetic and spiritual energy work and healing okay that we talked about here with this repair okay all of this repair and this renewal this regeneration okay there's going to be pain because there's a lot of inner alchemy that's taking place right now i'm seeing like the fire here with the temperance card it's like cooking the seed it's cooking it. So this is preparation. 
this is like the cosmos working with your inner self, working with the inner alchemy. There's a lot here that's being done, a lot here that's being taken place. There are some major changes coming. There are some major, major changes. And that is why this reserve seed, that power is required. This reserve seed is required for the main, for the major changes that are coming. I'm sorry, I feel like that was so long-winded. Because that's what this bee is representing to me and the bat. These major changes. Because the bat also represents rebirth, but the bee here is like your hard work being paid off. But I'm also seeing the bee move in a very particular direction. And it's reminding, it's symbolizing change. The spider, change, creation, something new. So this reserve seed, wow. How did I word that? Now I'm trying to think of how I worded that. The power and the energy that's in this reserve seed is what is required for the change that's coming. I want to channel the change. Let me get some new cards. Your ancestors are helping you with this, with this, um, with this seed, okay? With the reserve seed, the alchemy, they're helping you to prepare, okay? Because they're also, again, remember mirror, there's changes in the spiritual world for them. There's changes happening. I feel like this is um this is a This is a paradigm, a paradigm shift or but I want to use the word change, a paradigm change. Not just physically like materially, but also spiritually and cosmically because you have here the cosmic the cosmic womb, divine the divine feminine birthing change this is a paradigm change so the spiritual world is going to be affected the cosmic world the universe is going to be affected the planets are going to be affected we're going to be affected by this change and so this reservoir is required for the change that's coming does that make sense And so your ancestors are with you because they've been also getting prepared for this. They've been helping you to prepare for this. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I'm going to get... Um, I'm going to get... Let me get another deck. Hold on a second. I want to channel the change. I feel like there's so, there's, this is, um, with that rabbit energy, this is a very, I'm 
remember how I was saying like this is a very quick awakening like there's something there's something very rapid there's something very rapid here happening like it's a, it's a quickening really rapid changes but also rapid awakenings are happening for you to identify the self more So if you've been feeling, again, like hyper aware about yourself, don't be alarmed by that. Don't be alarmed by that. This is hyper awareness, but this is also a hyper awakening to more of the self, okay? To more of the ancestral bloodlines, the blueprints that you're now matching up to, okay? And that's the clarity and the organization that a lot of you are already in, I feel. A lot of you are in that. It's almost like you're looking around you and you're noticing this new house or your body feels like a new house, okay? Why? Because it's preparing. It's preparing for the changes to come, okay? And this reserved seed is exactly what's required. Okay, that power and that energy inside of you, okay, linked to your ancestors, that bond. This is exactly what is needed, what is required for the change that's, that's coming. This feels really big because it's mirrored everywhere. That's why time in the beginning, I could feel it. It was like everything and every. Everyone, every spiritual essence, every spirit is going to be impacted with this change. I don't know. I'm going to go to the mystical shaman and then the tarot. I want to know upper world. 59, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's 14, which is 5 change we have here upper world that's the cosmos that's like that cosmic that cosmic womb see the opening yeah yeah kathy divine I, yeah, is that the paradigm? Yeah, the bear, the, I almost wanted to use the word the higher paradigm change. We started talking about, uh, about ancestors and now we're talking about this. It's all connected because why? Because it's all mirrored. It's all mirrored. It's all connected. Oh, magic. There you go. 33. Didn't we have 33? We did. Joyful Muse. Okay. Um, music frequency. See, this is a new frequency. See here? Look at this. Look at this matching. 33. We have the Joyful Muse card. 33. Magic Muse. Inspiration. See the music? What Spirit is saying with this card is that this is a new frequency coming in. It's a new frequency. I don't, I, I feel like it's coming in from the upper world dimension, from a dimension, I don't know, from a, another, I don't know. I don't feel like we are, like, okay, we're tuning in, okay, we're tuning in to this new frequency, but it has to come in first. It has to come in first in order for us to tune into it. Does that make sense? Okay, so it's coming in from the upper world, from God knows where. And it has to come into a tidy house. It has to come into a tidy 
a clear and in an organized house. It's not going to come into the home where it is dirty, unclean, unsanitary. It's not. It's not going to it's not going to enter. And this new frequency is going to be felt throughout the entire like galaxy, this galaxy and the spirit world where your ancestors reside, mirror. I'm seeing this energy. You know what I just saw? You know what I just saw? I saw a, a light, like a frequency come and hit this mirror here. And it hit it and it started to bounce off in all these different directions. Just bouncing. You know what's crazy? It kind of looks like this. But see, this frequency is not here to destroy. It's here to repair. It's not here to divide, it's here to bring in. This, again, things are not as they seem. There's something here that's being brought in. See? With the ribbons being tied in. Anyway, this is, this is, I don't know, this is blah, blah, blah. A consciousness frequency, yeah. Thank you, Ariel. Didn't you say that to me? I feel like, Ariel, I think you, didn't you say that to me? I can't remember. I'm also getting um, this message of, of magic, of talents, skills, um, that you are going to be the the okay let me say this very specifically these are not gifts that you are okay these are not magical gifts psychic abilities enhanced intuition that you are going to be gifted these are magical abilities that you are born with. The reserved seed, the dragon power. You need this magic inside of you to be birthed and reborn. That is what's required for this new frequency, for this consciousness frequency that is coming into yourself. Does that make sense? There is no coincidence why a lot of you are going through upgrades, updates, you're feeling hyper aware, you're going through another another awakening. We never stop awakening. We're constantly awakening, constantly, constantly going through these what? Levels constantly okay as you are going through those levels what your ancestors are going through those levels too it's so important that your ancestors are evolving with you okay that's your bloodline that's your blood that's that's life that's life and it's running through you because you're here in the material. Okay? It's so important that your ancestors are evolving with you. It's so important because of that bond. Okay? It's that bond. All right. I feel like we're finally unlocking this message. I feel like we kind of sort of slow. All right, what did I want to say? Um, this change. Okay, so we understand that it's a consciousness frequency, a frequency. 
consciousness frequency okay we now understand there's new magic that we are born with that is being birthed inside of us and that is what we need that's what is required for this new consciousness frequency to come in okay give and receive death and rebirth right there again six six harmony look at this where i think we mentioned that before the cosmic womb six 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 harmony a lot of you are going to be start are going to start to see six 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 okay harmony and balance okay don't give me that crap of of you know six 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 okay get out of here with that that's this is harmony and balance okay what year are we in six six of pentacles Cosmic womb number six. What year are we in? Six. 33, six. 33, six. I don't know if this is like the sixth dimension where this, con with, where, where this is coming from. There's something coming in. I'm hearing sixth dimension. I'm feeling a lot of love, a lot of love energy. This is your, your death and rebirth. We know that. And it's so crazy. It's so crazy. Look at the light. Remember how I said I saw a light and the light hit the mirror. And when the light hit the mirror, it kind of went all, it started to, to move all over the place. Look at the light coming through here. Where is it coming in yourself? And what's yourself? Yourself is a tidy house now, right? And think of, when you start to think of your tidy house, even if you don't feel tidy yet, even if you don't feel that prepared, talk in the way that you are prepared. So say, I am prepared. I am ready. I am this magic. I am the magic. I am today. I am magic. I have birthed the dragon power seed inside of myself that's required for this new energy. Okay? I have birthed. I have already birthed. Not I am birthing. I have already birthed. Okay? Because this is happening. All right? Now, yes. Okay, and that's what the Six of Pentacles is talking to me about. Harmony, harmony and balance now. Giving and receiving now. Not, oh, I'm going to receive later. Do you ever get into that energy? I do that sometimes. Actually, I did. Okay, I don't do that now. Change the way you see how you give and how you receive. Oh, I'm going to call that person later. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to tell my mom I love her tomorrow. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to donate this later. Now. Okay? I'm going to give myself a massage tomorrow. I'm going to start this tomorrow. No, start today. Okay? And about receiving. It's so funny because I used to be I used I used to talk like that a lot a lot especially when it came to receiving oh i'm going to i'm going to be you know i don't want a relationship now i'm going to receive love later i'm going to receive it later i'm going to receive this later no you receive it now okay that's what the six of pentacles is talking to me about the giving and the receiving now you're receiving this consciousness frequency now you are you have already birthed the seed the dragon power seed inside of you that's required you are the magic now you're using your reservoirs now you're using this now let me tell you something also 
that energy of now is going to help you understand time time for what it time for what it really is okay time for what it really is not linear what is this the infinity sign right it's going to help you understand time i know some of you are already like you can travel through time like you can travel past present future some of you i know some of you can do that okay but some of you, it's hard for some people to conceptualize time for what it really is. By being in the energy in the present moment, it's, it, also, it almost makes your feet so, um, like, how do, I, how do I say it? Um, like, easy, fluid, like jelly. It just makes it much more fluid like what like time because time is fluid i'm telling you once you understand something do you know how easy it comes to you once you understand something The Emperor, number four. That's so funny you say that, Eve. Another six. I, I'm telling you. You have six, six, six here on the table. I'm telling you right now. The Lovers, number six. Six of Pentacles. The cosmic moon, six. There's something with the sixth dimension. I don't know what the sixth dimension is. I've never channeled the sixth dimension. Everyone talks about the 5D, 4D. This is sixth dimension. 666 six, six on the table. And then 33, 33. Thanks for that confirmation spirit. Now I know for sure I don't talk out of my ass. <laughs> you have here the magician, the emperor. So Eve said something interesting. What'd you say? About fingering, figuring it out, right? Because when the emperor came out, I had the exact thought. The more you let go of figuring it out, the easier it comes, right? I'm seeing a narrative be let go here. I'm seeing a narrative be let go. Sixth dimension is the higher self. That's interesting. That's interesting. Thank you for that. Because um, we were talking about the hyper awareness of self here. So that does align. That does align a lot. Um, what was I saying with the emperor? Um, a narrative. A narrative is being let go of. Letting go of narratives helps you to be in the now moment. And I was talking about this with Patrick too yesterday. So it's really interesting that this is all coming out in the cards. trying to figure something out, trying to put narratives on emotions. Now I'm seeing the moon. Let go of narrating your emotions. Why do I feel like this? When did I start to feel like that? How do I feel like this? Let it go. Emotions are fluid, just like time. Let it go. Let the narratives go because that's what the emperor here is holding on to, that chess piece, right? Actually, the emperor is holding on to a narrative. And I'm not seeing a new narrative coming in. I'm seeing flow, magic, fluidity, 
time fluidity, self fluidity, magician. You can't make this up. You have you're the magician. Look at the bottom of the deck. Another six, six of cups. <laughs> you just can't. You can't make this up. Yes, we are the new narrative. Just you, you. Let your energy speak for itself. Let your energy write the story. Let your energy write the narrative. Okay? I feel like my ancestors are giving me this advice. Like, I don't feel like this is me because th this is advice I need. <laughs> so just know that I am channeling this and I am not giving advice. I'm actually taking advice. So this is my ancestors coming in, stepping in and saying all of this. Um, it's not me. <laughs> Because I definitely need to take this advice. Queen of Cups, intuition, heightened awareness, heightened awareness of the self, and what else? Self love. Self love. Look at that. The lovers and the Queen of Cups. This is self love right here. This is also a higher love, right? A higher love of the self. And it's so funny because Russell was saying um, in his life about marrying the self. And it's interesting because this is sacred union of the self. That's so funny how it's coming out in this way, in this reading. Because that's where the power comes in. That's, that's the dragon power. That's the dragon power. That's the seed. That's the pearl. That is what's being birthed inside of you that's so painful right now with the updates and the upgrades. Right? It's painful. It's hard. I'm telling you guys right now, I was at rock bottom. With all the shit that I was going through. Oh my God. My dragon power was, was being birthed. And now that it's here, I'm utilizing it. I'm using... The magic that I was born with. And a lot of you are using the power that and the magic that you are born with. That is what's required for this new energy, for this new conscious frequency. And you are succeeding at sacred union of the self. The lovers and the queen of cups. You're letting go. You're letting go. You're letting go of the narrative. You're letting go of everything so that you can become one with the self. Yes, boundlessness, freedom. Remember when we started out the in the mandala, what were the two words that came out? Guardrails? Releasing the guardrails. Oh my God, the emperor is all about putting up guardrails. So beautiful. So gorgeous. Like I'm telling you right now, like I feel like the ancestors are just like cheering, egging on. Go, 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 go. Because they're liberated. Right? Mirror. Mirror. Oh, look at this. Four swords. Healing. Healing. Oh, it's so crazy. This is a self reborn. Because <laughs> I'm like, this looks like an egg. Duh. <laughs> The seed. What's in the seed? Remember what I was like, what's in the seed? Oh, it's you. You're in the seed. Spirit is so funny sometimes. You are in the seed. Now we, now we know what's inside the seed. It's you. It's you. 
<gasps> How beautiful. Let's get a final card. Queen of Pentacles and Two of Cups. At the bottom of that, hold your own goddamn hand throughout all of this, honey. Hold your hand. You know what's so crazy is this is how I sleep sometimes. <gasps> this is literally how I sleep. I want everyone to do this right now. I want everyone to do this. Just do this. Put your arm, put your hands together. Because you are at one with yourself right now. You're literally at one with yourself right now with all this energy that's coming through in the reading from your ancestors, from the cosmos, from the divine, from this new consciousness, frequency. It's all here. This is your sacred union. Right here. You have awakened the magic inside of yourself that you are born with, not what you have been gifted with, what you are born with. You are aware of that. You have awakened to that. You are beautiful. You are magical. You are powerful. You are abundant. You are exactly where you need to be. You are exactly where you are. Here, there, <laughs> over there. You are right here. And most importantly, what did your ancestors always want to go back to? You're safe. You're safe with yourself with your higher self, with this new consciousness frequency, with this new and tidy self that is clean, that is rebirth, that is pure, you are safe. You are safe. Wow. There's a lot of feminine energy here, sacred feminine energy. It's interesting with the Queen of Pentacles, and Nirvana just said mother love. This is what it feels like, that nurture, that care. But it's interesting because I want you two to look at these two energies. They're both holding on to something, right? But why does this feel so much different than that? This is where we held on to narratives. This is where we let go of the narrative. This is where we decided to embrace ourselves right? Having that sacred union of the self. What is the queen of pentacles doing? Holding that pentacle. Reaching inside. Reaching inside his or her reserves. That is what you are reaching for here because your reserves are flowing inside of your very being in the now moment. Your magic, your power, your self, and all the energies that it contains inside of your physical vessel. You reach inside of the reserve that is flowing freely Okay, and there's a lot of careful considerations here. 
very carefully consider where do you want to place these reserves, these energies? Where do you want to place them now? You have a clean, tidy house. Yeah, content. Yeah, it can't be stolen either. It's protected, right? Safety, discernment. For this change, it's funny because you have here wind staring at me on the bottom of the mystical shaman deck. Winds of change, right? 63, which is also divine nine. This is you in the new consciousness frequency, okay? This is you carefully considering where your powers and your magic will specifically go to. We always talk about empowerment on this channel. The power always is returned to you. I definitely feel like this is also a teaching of the ancestors right now that a lot of people may miss. The power that's inside of you, yes, is mirrored to your ancestors or with your ancestors, but the power is not all on them or with them. The power is with you. And I feel like that's the realization here is that you're holding on to your power. A lot of people also have the misconception that the power is with spirit. Not all the power is with spirit. The power is with you. Remember that, okay? This is all always about empowerment and returning power back to you, okay? This is you with your power. What is this mandala called? Dragon power. You're holding your dragon power. And here we go. We just went full circle. <laughs> pun intended because a pentacle is a circle as well. <laughs> wow. How beautiful is that? How beautiful is that? And like, look at you, the star of your own life. How beautiful is that? You're the star. And look at that. And then love comes in, Knight of Cups, <laughs> with the Ace of Wands. <laughs> It's so funny because that's what Russ said too in his live. Um, when you marry yourself, come into sacred union with the self, that is when you could have, right? Where is it? Sacred union in another. Or a deeper connection with another um, if you were already with someone, okay? Because we can only meet someone as deeply as we meet ourselves, right? Ooh, beautiful. Thank you, ancestors. Um, I feel like there was a lot here, but I feel like we, we eventually tied all of the, we eventually tied it all together <laughs> with a nice bow on top. All right, that's all that I have for you guys today. Um, I think I'm going to come, I am coming live tomorrow as well. Um, what am I talking about tomorrow? Ah, uh, trail markers. We're going to do some magic. We're going to do some magic tomorrow since we are pulling from our dragon power magic now. We're going to do some magic tomorrow. And I'm all for that. So I'm gonna test my magic. We're all gonna test our magic, and we're gonna we're gonna see what transpires. All right, my loves. I am going to get into some readings. 
and I will catch you guys in tomorrow's live. I love you guys so very much. I hope this helps. All my love.